Um, running down the list of stuff in the viewer pipeline. Uh, we have obviously the next round of main fixes, which has quite a lot of stuff in it. Um, including some uh, very nice contributions, little fixes in various places from a couple of people out there. Thank you. Uh, VLC, the QuickTime Replacement Viewer, should be going to release candidate status again. That is updating uh, very shortly. We have one bug where some things get, some uh, renderings get inverted vertically that we're still trying to sort out. Uh, but once that's done, we should be, we should be good to go. Uh, and uh, there's an update to the Bento viewer. It turns out that we got some very, very late breaking feedback, but which was very convincing. Uh, is the media sound bug fixed too? There are some fixes to sound. Um, I don't know specifically which ones. The um, the Bento viewer is getting an update. It is pretty likely that this will be the last iteration of it as a project viewer. Um, there's a good chance that will become a release candidate in a few weeks. I would, you know, not not real short term because Spear is going on vacation. But when he gets back, that'll be our goal. Um, the uh, Visual Outfit Browser Viewer is also getting an update. Uh, let me look at my status board here. Yeah, so that's coming out as an RC Viewer. Right. Yeah. As soon as it gets its last bug fix. And uh, we are doing work on the 64-bit viewers and hope to have a project viewer out pretty soon. So that's the that's kind of the pipeline at the moment of active viewer projects uh, and keep your fingers crossed we're going to try and get lots of those things into the main viewer by the end of the quarter so probably not all of them but we'll see if we can do most um, Right. Uh, okay. Um, wanted to talk very quickly about voice. Invoice? Huh? Uh, it has come to our attention that some third party viewers are rolling back the fix for voice 36. Uh, this is, this was the change that um, added um, it added enforcement of specific uh, handle values um, that is generation of random handle values on the protocol that goes on between SL voice and the and the viewer uh, it and apparently that was not fully compatible with the Linux version of SL Voice, which is very, very old. Um, it is unfortunately true that we are not going to get an update of the Linux voice support. It's just not, it's not on the, right. Uh, and.
Yeah, thank you, Whirly. Um, and you'll note that that one's closed. And um, there's not, it, it is possible that, uh, it, you know, a suggestion I have for the Linux community is it is possible that you might be able to run SL Voice under uh, Wine and and use the Windows SL Voice. Uh, that might be worth something worthwhile thing to explore. It, it is unfortunately not something I can devote somebody to doing, but. Yeah, so um, the reason I the reason there are two reasons I bring this up. Number one is if you're going to revert that fix, please do it only for Linux. And by the way, it's a bad idea even even there. There's there was a very good reason why we did that fix. Uh, there are there are vulnerabilities that that is at least partially protective against that can that can result in people uh, subverting the security of your system in really unpleasant ways. Um, and I, I don't want to get into the details because I don't want to publish what the problem is uh, and how to exploit it. But it is very real. And those while those fixes are not the end of the road, they are definitely an important beginning and should not be ignored. So I would strongly recommend that people explore alternatives to rolling that fix back. Um, there, so the second part of that discussion, the larger discussion of voice, is that we're, we're, um, we are engaged in a, in a program with Vivox to update uh, a bunch of the voice support. We're going to be getting a new version of SL Voice uh, pretty soon. Um, as usual, I'm not going to give you dates, but it, it, it'll. I will tell you when we've got it. It should be backwards compatible with with what you're using, so you should be able to drop it in. Uh, it will add support for the Opus Voice Codec, which um, will get you better voice quality, at least if everybody in the conversation is using the new voice. Uh, and we will also be doing a bunch of improvements to protect voice privacy and security and keep voice from being uh, as useful a tool for bad actors as, it's, as it can be today. So that's going to involve uh, changes in the simulator, changes in the viewer, changes in SL voice and changes in the Vivox server software. So we're going to have to stage that out carefully. We will be putting out viewer changes that third party viewers should adopt. Uh, and once they are sufficiently widespread, uh, or at least once we have given people a reasonable amount of time to have adopted them, uh, we will begin making changes on the back end and if you have not adopted those changes by that time voice will simply not work at all for you so um, this is this is you know in the nature of very distant early warning that when we talk about voice changes over the next several months uh, you should be paying attention and keeping up because we will most assuredly and very intentionally break support with old implementations of voice, and they simply will not work at all. So um, uh, it will not do anything at all for the Linux voice issue. In fact, it will break all existing Linux implementations, period. And we will not get an update for Linux. Sorry. Um, if, you, if you run the Windows one under Wine, it should work. Or it may work. Uh, it's um, yeah, that's the Windows Voice implementation. And if that works now, it should continue to work. I, I know no reason why it wouldn't. 
Um, well, it is it is true that Vivox has stopped supporting Linux, um, and and that's you know actually I think arguably a pretty reasonable decision on their part, uh, but. So have we. Basically, we have said we'll keep we'll keep the the code there and we'll keep accepting contributions to keep it working. But we're basically not having Linden developers do work to keep Linux working. We're we're developing for primarily for Windows and the Mac. And if it happens to be true that the Linux version continues to work, good. But it is. It is not something we're spending much time on. Um, if the Linux community wants it to keep working, the Linux community is going to have to follow development and fix problems as they come up and give us the solutions, which we will then integrate um, as long as they don't break anything else. Um, that's that's just the way it is. Uh, I, I don't have the resources to keep up with Linux. It's way too large an incremental investment for the microscopically small number of users who actually use it. And it is, uh, you know, it is microscopic. No, we don't have access to the Vivox, to the SL voice code. We get binaries from there. Uh, I haven't actually looked at the numbers lately, really, but it, it it was last time I did it was less than one percent, and an even smaller number and, and a small, very small percentage of that very small percentage were running our viewer. So um, it just doesn't. It just doesn't make sense. Yeah, well, this is not a representative sample. Um, <laughs> I sometimes think that Second Life is an enormous collection of unrepresentative, uh, un unrepresentative samples. Uh, Very vocal ones. <laughs> yes, many, many of them are very vocal. Um, so we we are going to try to tackle some very serious and long-standing problems with the voice service. Uh, unfortunately, having looked very very carefully at those problems and what it will take to fix them, it is not something we can do without making changes that are not backwards compatible. So we have we we are we are faced with two alternatives. Leave the problems in place or fix them and break all the old implementations. Uh, and we have chosen the latter. So that's the plan and we'll 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 work I mean I'll keep telling you about it here and telling you what things you should pick up. Uh, so that was that was the big topic for the day and the sort of status update for the day. Um, so we're to the floor is open for issues.
That's a that's great news, Worley. Thank you. <laughs> Kitty, I'm I'm so glad you're finding it possible to keep up again. That's great. The uh, actually that the that that firestorm release does that contain the SL voice that we're shipping in our viewer now? I hope. Anybody know? Okay, the reason I ask is that that contains a bunch of new support for gathering of statistics about quality and um, connection failures and reconnects and all that that will enable us to more closely monitor how well voice is behaving. <clears throat> so, and unfortunately, uh, um, we don't get Right now, we're getting data on about 15% of the users. So, yeah, we are, we are, it is not completely on hold. 64 bit is, is back to making real progress. Uh, it will get more help once VLC has its last bug or two quashed. Uh, but, um, will be, will be, uh, well, we'll be trying to trying to put put on the big push to get that out the door soon. Um, that will be appearing, of course, first as a project viewer, uh, and we will appreciate all the help that I'm sure you'll give us in in exposing the problems with it. Um, the uh, Windows, we will have both a 64-bit and a 32-bit viewer. Mac, and um, and if there's a Linux build, Linux will have only 64-bit builds. And we're hoping that that will help people. Yeah, we'll do we'll do havoc builds as part of that and get get those to the people who are licensed for them. It is it is our hope that it will reduce the out of memory crashes or at least make them take longer to happen. Well, second life users seem to be particularly adept at 
finding ways to consume lots of memory. Also to create lots of folders in inventory. That's, but I digress. <laughs> Uh, I don't know, Greg. Depends on your definition of fun. Other topics? If not, I get a half an hour free, which I could use. Okay, uh, well, you all know how to reach me if you need to. Thank you very much for coming, and uh, what's 20075? Yeah, we have been observing that happening much more, too. That's why we have added that logging that we're hoping is merged into your viewer. Um, part, part of that, um, we, we cannot say with any certainty whether or not um, it's the only issue, but part of the issue with that is that um, for for some months, uh, the griefers have been um, directing some of their attention at the Vivox servers, and that's that's been responsible for some. They have put in place a lot of measures to to correct that, and we think it's uh, we think it's been largely successful, but that may not be all of the problem. So, but we're going to, as I say, we're going to be updating, we're going to be updating the server software at, at their end um, in a variety of ways. Uh, and we're also going to be, we've put in this new monitoring stuff that's in the latest SL voice and we'll be, we'll be adding more. So, Yes, right. It was the SL voice that coincided with the coroutine changes, although the, the two were not otherwise related. They were just released in the same version. Uh, 
Uh, Drake, I, I don't, I'm, I'm not really in a position to comment about the specifics of what changed or what didn't, because I, I don't know. But the stuff that was removed is stuff that we don't, that we intend to remove on the server side. And we will probably do that sometime in Q4, would be my guess. Okay. I will see you all soon. <laughs>